Thank you, um, Minister, one of the key issues that affects many people at the moment um, is online fraud. Uh, nearly one in five crimes estimated by the Crime Survey will be committed online. And there is a different structure and approach of reporting and uh, dealing with online crime by different forces. Uh, from your experience and from the information that you have, uh, are you saying there's the, uh, it's been dealt with in the way it should be dealt with? Uh, we're, not near, we're, 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 we're nowhere near where we need to be. Uh, on this issue, you're, you're quite right. I and mean, if I can, you know, most of us, most of our constituents are far more vulnerable to crime online uh, through the joy, through the computers in their in, in our in our homes than they are, uh, you know, uh, walking down the streets of Dilim or Ryslip, um, uh, and that's reflected in the in the in, in the crime stats. Um, last year, I went through a, a system going round the system, talking to every single. Uh, police chief, and I always ask the question: In your area, which victims of crime get the worst, yeah. the worst deal from the police? Invariably, uh, they will say victims of uh, of of online fraud, cybercrime. That's invariably, and uh, and they're right, and the public know that because although public's, you know, the polling and survey shows very high levels of public confidence and in the police and the faith in the police, that breaks down quite sharply by crime type and there's low levels of confidence in getting a good service from local police uh, in response to uh, what we might call loosely cybercrime. So you've got one of the fastest areas going uh, uh, off crime where the public have low confidence and then you've got the, uh, the, the, the chief's own analysis suggesting that only a third of local forces have got uh, anywhere near the kind of local capability that they need in this area. Uh, you can see that this is uh, an unacceptable and unsustainable situation. So the, 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 there is a response. And the other element to this is that, uh, and I know my colleague Ben Wallace Scrutinist, who leads on this, is, is very clear in his mind that capabilities need to be aligned more intelligently between national, regional and, and local. Uh, there has been resource capability building at the national level and at the regional rock level, but it's the local capability that needs building up. Uh, the Derbyshire, Derbyshire chief is, uh, is 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 leading on this, and uh, you know we're in discussions about how that is uh, that how that is best done. There is a there's some there's some very interesting innovation in this area because uh, and the college uh, my kind of least college is sitting behind me here, but the college are doing some excellent work in terms of yeah. upgrading their digital training for officers. Um, but there's some interesting innovation in here. So for example, Hampshire. I don't know if there's a Hampshire MP here. Have led the field in encouraging kind of what they call cyber specials, which is basically encouraging volunteers mm -hmm. from the public who've got uh, skills that would take uh, forever to develop inside the police system to come in and offer those to the force. Other forces, such as uh, Merseyside, I know, have connections with their universities to do something uh, similar. So there is an urgent need for the police to build their capability in this area. It is being built at the national regional level. It needs to be built up more yeah. at the local level through whatever means, and then these capabilities need to be aligned in a more yeah. uh, intelligent way. That's how I see it. Well, Mr. I think we've all agreed that it's completely unsatisfactory in terms of how people online, um, uh, subject to online fraud, are being treated. Uh, and you've accepted there's challenges on that. The Home Office have a joint fraud uh, task force. Uh, this question has been raised about the transparency and competence of that. Linked to that, the government has put in 35 million in relation to online fraud helpline. Obviously, that hasn't um, worked. Will there be additional resources put into this area? And in relation to improvements, um, I, I, I take what you say in relation to the work done by Minister Wallace, on this, short term, medium term, long term. What's the short term uh, position in relation to addressing this? Because uh, it's not just simply about low conviction rates, it's about the way these matters are investigated. So, what's the short term, medium term, and long term? So, the, 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 the short term involves some resource building uh, um, uh, and some money has gone into the, the rock system there's a national cyber uh, uh, program of I think sort of 1.9 billion pounds over the bottom so there is there is resource going in but also the system needs to uh, to build capability but the system needs to work better so uh, as, as you'll know from your constituency uh, you know the, the this organization action fraud has been set up to help effectively manage the flow of 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 uh, of, of uh, uh, actions from the public in terms of reporting uh, incidents, and I think there's a recognition that that system is not working in the most optimal way, and too many 
too many uh, cases or let's just say, pinging around the system. And what I know Ben is keen to do is, again, is to align the capabilities more clearly, align the responsibilities more clearly, and make sure that whatever gets passed down to the local force to pick up stays there and is sent to the local force for the, for the, for the right reason. So there's a, an alignment of capability and making sure that actually the flow of the, of the cases is managed in a, in a, in a smarter way. Is, I think would I think be some of his priorities. Grateful for that. Just um, moving slightly over to um, one of the announcements that have come in recently, and that's the government's allocation of 1.38 million to social media hub in relation to serious violent crime strategy um, to help address gang uh, culture, um, uh, looking at online materials available. Um, how will that work in practice? Uh, we just it's uh, we've just approved a, a, a pilot at. Uh, uh, at, a, at, a, at a concept stage. So the context here is that, <clears throat> you know, among the many factors that are at play in terms of uh, uh, driving, encouraging, inciting this hideous series of violence, which we've got to got to get on top of, is is again coming back is what's available online in terms of <coughs> in terms of in terms of videos. And having seen some of them, um, this is entirely uh, valid. Point. So, what the police have asked for is, is is support of a of a of a pilot to target, and it's been London focused to start with, I believe, uh, to to target some of the gangs that appear to be um, most um, prevalent in terms of uh, uh, using this material and, and use, uh, so to incite violence and uh, <coughs> and to run a run an operation to disrupt to to, to target and disrupt those. Um, uh, as, a, as a pilot exercise. Scott, did you want to add anything to that yes. in terms of actually how it will work? So, so as the Minister said, that the uh, pilot is going to be hosted by the Metropolitan Police uh, with a squad of uh, 20 uh, police staff and officers uh, focused very much on disrupting and removing overt and covert gang-related material online. Uh, so, for example, material that glamorises murder or lures young people into uh, violent life crime will be taken, that, identified by that team, and proactively working with the companies to get it removed from the internet. And how will you be working with other forces? That's a pilot. And so, uh, if this pilot is successful, then is there uh, resources available for that to be expanded by the companies? Well, we'll see the, we'll see the, we'll see, see the evidence in the first, but it is, it is, it is conceived of a pilot. If, if, the, you know, if, if the outcomes of it are, are, are good, then we'll, we'll look to build on it you know, in the context of the serious violence uh, strategy. It's just, it's just one, one element of a, of a, of a broad strategy. And, and I'll just add to that. So, uh, um, Deputy Assistant Commissioner Duncan Ball, who is the lead in the Metropolitan Police Service, is also the National Police Chief's lead for uh, gangs, so he's clearly working very closely with his colleagues and our forces on the wider issue. Just a, a clarification on timeline, um, so we're clear on this. The pilot is taking place. Um, when does the pilot um, finish? So, are you in a position to come up with your conclusions whether this, was, um, this is something that should be rolled out elsewhere? I'm afraid I don't know the precise details. It's, it's, it's only just been approved. Sure. Okay. One final question. On the anti-crime community fund, I have a brilliant local vicar, Nathan Ward, in St Margaret's Church, who's applied for some of this funding uh, to work with the local community supported by the Family Trust to uh, ensure that areas which may not historically have gang crime or minor crime issues uh, can actually be ahead of the game and help address okay. some of the challenges coming their way. Um, in relation to... Uh, the decision from the point of application to the point of decision being made. Uh, how quick and speedy can these decisions and projects be allocated? I think it, I think I think uh, I think there are rounds of it, and I think it can be done uh, quickly. I've not heard any complaint about uh, sort of unnecessary yeah. bureaucracy uh, around this. The, the intention is to, you know, the driving force behind this is, is a clear understanding that, yeah. you know, we can't to use the cliche rest our way out of this problem. So we've got to put in our strategy. Make sure both pillars are properly balanced: robust law enforcement and, and effective prevention and early uh, intervention. And that requires, you know, some funding support for some of the excellent uh, civil society organisations out there that are you know, close to communities, close to communities, close to people in the communities, and, and can can help us in this collective challenge of trying to steer young people away from violence and decisions that will have devastating consequences for for their lives and their families. You know. So. Um, that's that's the, the heart of the heart of the strategy, and and, and uh, that does require some funding support. No, great for given. that. Yeah. Final question: Will you come down to Gillingham and uh, meet with the community? Because we've just had a fatal 
uh, incident where a younger teenager, Carl Yule, was stabbed to death, and those responsible have now been convicted of Mason Crown Court. Yeah, of course um, they will. I think, very much, I think very much part of our responsibility is always risking national government that you kind of sit in, sit in Whitehall and sit in conference rooms and, and feel disconnected from the communities that you're, you're, you're trying to support. And so uh, yeah, I feel very much part of my responsibility to engage with the community. So that's a long answer to a shorter answer, which is yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Tom, just um, by clarification, you were here for the evidence session earlier where the Minister was asked questions on online crime and fraud. Um, and the Minister accepted that um, uh, there is a, a real lack of um, you know, competence in this area. Um, by police forces and the disparity across the board. And um, both Home Office need to do more and police forces need to do more. Just looking at that in the context of uh, the HMIC inspection the reports in 2015, uh, and they said very few police officers know their role or the role of what the police forces need to do in relation to fraud investigation. That was a statement in 2015. We saw the response from the Minister earlier today. Um, what exactly? Um, needs to be done. Has there been improvement since 2015? Where does one go now? Um, as you say, we did our report in 2015 and we're about to do another one. Um, the inspection program for the current year, which I'm expecting the Home Secretary to approve any day, sure. um, uh, provides for a thematic inspection on fraud, which will uh, be uh, taking place. Um, it, it'll involve 11 forces. And the National Crime Agency, the Metropolitan Police, City of London Police, and uh, specifically, of course, Action Fraud and the National Fraud Intelligence Bureau. Uh, those will be the subject. Uh, but we will collect data from all 43 forces. Um, we're about to do the field work, and we will be looking at uh, the competence of the police in order to understand this. Fraud is uh, it's ever-growing. It's an enormous problem. Uh, because basically it's altering somebody's position on the faith of a, of a lie uh, to their material disadvantage. And um, one of the things we're particularly concerned about is have the forces um, improved the extent to which they regard fraud as a priority? Fraud is almost like an invisible crime. People don't get injured as a result of a fraud, at least not directly. However, they can be driven to, in some cases, to destroying themselves because of the consequences of the fraud. They can lose their life savings, they are ashamed, um, they believe they let their families down, etc. It is a very, very serious problem and it is a growing problem because of the cyber-enabled fraud that is, is so prevalent. So we will be, I can't answer your question, have they got much better yet? But uh, when we've done the inspection, we will be able to so, do so. No, do you, I, I totally, totally get that. And you know, it would be completely unfair to ask you to comment on something where the investigate, where the report hasn't been done, and that's been looked at at the moment. But the, on the general wider point, from what you saw in 2015, um, is there a uh, point now where, uh, rather than having warranted police officers look at technical uh, issues of uh, fraud and cyber fraud? then you then have centralised um, experts looking at cyber fraud addressing this. Uh, would you say that's the way to go, considering we've just had a statement by the Minister now to say the problem is as worse as it was, we've been looking at addressing it, but realistically, if, I'm, uh, if I've been unfair to the Minister, others have heard what he had to say. But we've got a massive problem, and uh, we've identified the issue in 2015, but are you now saying rather than having those uh, warranted officers, we need specialists to help address this and maybe a centralised form of system? In the main, you don't need to be a police officer to investigate fraud. You need a, poli a police officer. The things you absolutely must be a police officer to be able to do is to arrest somebody or to subject them to a compulsory search. Um, but police officers, uh, ex particularly experienced de detectives, have very considerable professional skills which are necessary and indeed uh, of, en of enormous value in investigating fraud. But um, in the investigation of fraud, you need to have people with, with the very best skills. And they may be, indeed in many respects they will be, people who have very high technical still, skills, who don't happen to be police officers, but they are members of police staff. And that's, and that's perfectly, perfectly right. But fraud, in, in the model as you know, 
is that fraud is referred to action fraud so that they can determine patterns of behavior and to work out whether or not there are sufficient leads, there are sufficient, uh, there's sufficient data in order to be able to warrant an investigation. And in a very many cases, there are not. Um, and that's where artificial intelligence uh, can come in. Um, last week, um, I published, and it's laid before Parliament, the annual State of Policing report, and there's a lot in there. Uh, we sent it to all members of the committee. We, there's a lot in there about artificial intelligence, about how AI uh, could be developed by the police with assistance, and indeed a, a very great deal of assistance and involvement from the experts in the field to determine um, to, to be able to process and understand vast amounts of data to make connections which people could not make and to work out what is happening, perhaps thinking in ways that no person ever could, and to be able to do that with, uh, with a degree of reliability and, of course, a degree of speed that is just unattainable by ordinary people, because that is what is necessary. Who's doing that at the moment? That work on developing, taking, AI. developing AI work, yeah. Uh, there are um, pieces of that in the National Crime Agency and in the Metropolitan Police, but from what we have seen, and of course we will be doing the inspection later, but from what I've seen so far, it's pretty patchy. But there's not a sort of systematic... No, as far as I know, there is not a systematic uh, process for the large-scale development of AI in the investigation of fraud. And in the current system, who should be doing that? Is that work that the college should be doing? Is that work that police forces should be doing together? Is that work that the Home Office should be doing? Where should that lie in the current landscape? It is something for policing to do uh, collectively. Uh, I think the national institutions, especially the college, have a very material role in doing that. But this is, this is improving the operational capability of police forces to act collectively. There is no point in a small force uh, having its own uh, uh, dedicated uh, team to deal with things like this, which must be dealt with on a national and sometimes an international basis. Just a clarification on that. Um, the Home Office have said they have the, the task force uh, across the board which looks at this. Um, is it something which um, that task force uh, should they be doing uh, this a lot of this collaboration or is it something which um, the um, I think it's Joe saying individual police forces have to look at separately I don't think it's an individual matter I think it is it is um, the Home Office have a very material role in well in police policy generally but in facilitating cooperation between police forces and, poli and national institutions including the National Crime Agency and the college of course have a material role as well but this is not something for any individual force, even the Met, one as large as the Met, to do alone. And one final point, just separate to that, um, I represent a constituency in Kent which has been rated outstanding three years in a row. Um, and for legitimacy. Yeah, for, yeah, for legitimacy. Um, to get an outstanding three years in a row, which other uh, forces have not done, um, what would you put that down to? Excellent leadership, hard work and commitment of staff, great partnership between the Chief Constable and the Police Commissioner. What do you put it down to? I, 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 all of the above, but, but it really the quality of leadership because the whole culture of the organisation, the way in which it treats its people, the way in which it looks after its own staff and the way in which it um, uh, deals with the public uh, comes from the top. And uh, I think the leadership of Kent Police have shown, uh, shown uh, an exemplary uh, practice in this respect. Both the Police Commissioner Matthew Sport and the Chief Constable. Well, it's predominantly. I, I, I don't want to take anything away from the PCC, but this is a matter for the leadership of the force. Right, yeah. But uh, I think that um, Mr. Scott, the Police and Crime Commissioner for Kent, has been very, very supportive of that approach. And of course, both he and the Chief Constable are very proud of the rating they've got.